As a matter of fact, um, the greatest form of service is service for people you don't even know. Never mind like. I mean, if you can, see, we, we serving people we don't like is a little bit of a test. It's also a transmuting thing, actually, for us, and it's a good thing to do, of course. But we are. I mean, that again comes back to oneness. We are all one with all life. It's not limited even to people. I, I mean, what I find in a lot of karma yoga writings is is that they're very, very limited compared to what we're given here. Uh, we are interrelated to everybody on earth. We are responsible for the animal kingdom. We're responsible for the vegetation. We're responsible for the equipment, the material equipment that we've created. And all of this is responsive to spiritual energy and thought, as well as physically. So there are numerous ways to serve. And politicians managed to get together, and they managed to get a treaty together, and they managed to get it signed. This would be great. We'd all be delighted. But it wouldn't last unless the people changed. So it's a bit of paper unless they change. So I'm trying to illustrate a point here. So how do people change? They change by being uh, receptive to spiritual energy, because that changes their consciousness. Then they don't want war because they have changed. Likewise with the financial problems of the world. You know, one could have a great welfare policy and a this and do that and the other and what they call in England quantitative easing, which is printing money and complicating, you know, Keynesian economics, whatever it might be. While there's greed, there's going to be poverty. While there's selfishness, there's going to be an unfair distribution of wealth. There's no system that's ever changed it, no political system. But spiritual energy could change it. Because then people wouldn't want to be indulging themselves while other people are suffering and starving. They wouldn't want to do that. They don't want to do it on other planets. And so it goes on. So the core, then, is to change the consciousness of the world. And this is what we can do through service in, in many forms, by the way. Teaching is just one of them. But it can be done by transmitting energy. Now, one of the greatest ways to do it is through prayer, something we do a lot of, something which is very misunderstood. And uh, I'd like to give you an example from this book of a prayer. Uh, and this one was channeled through Dr. King by the Master Jesus. There are many prayers that people can use. You see there a prayer called the New Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm giving this as an example. This is a wonderful prayer, and it's extremely balanced. If you decide to do prayer, you are not praying for just those you love. And, and of course, we should look after people we love and people who are close to us. But you're praying for everyone, anyone who needs it, and you don't know what good you might do. You know, in this room, you've sent out energy and you've seen people, two people who are on the platform at least, and one who wasn't, have been healed. <laughs> but if you send out a prayer, you, might, you won't get that feedback from the person who's perhaps whose life you might have saved. You don't know. So it's a very impersonal thing, and it's a really high expression of love, and it is service. They all come together. You know, it might require some bravery to get started, some love to do it, and you're then giving great service, and you're well on the road to enlightenment. Let's just go through this prayer as an example of a great prayer and see what it means, because the wording of a prayer is very important, and this is a, a brilliantly worded prayer, and I think it falls, this prayer, into two halves. And it's very balanced in that respect. Uh, they're not equal halves, but they, I think there are, this, this prayer is really in two halves. So if we start from the beginning, O divine and wondrous spirit, a very powerful word in any prayer is the word O, O-H. It's a, a word which expresses awe. You know, a, a, it's a very powerful thing uh, to ha in praying to have humility. It's also good for the soul. But it, it, it is a... Um, technically, if that's the word, effective thing, because it makes you an, a much more immediate channel. You can try it. You can try it as a little test. If you go before the divine source, whatever you call it, God, Allah, Brahma, Jehovah, these are names, um, absolute, and you do it with humility, um, you'll find it, the power, the energy flows very quickly to you. Humility isn't, is not um, B 
beating yourself up, it's seeing your smallness and, if you like, your unworthiness in the great scheme of things and then having the competence to go forth and call for energy. So this does it. So the word O is a very powerful word, actually, strangely enough. O divine and wondrous spirit, O everlasting Lord of hosts. So you, you, that's your, your invocation. And then you come to the point, send forth, quite definite this, send forth now through me thy great and lasting power. If you just said, send forth now through me thy great and lasting power, it'd be quite blasé, wouldn't it? It would be quite arrogant in a way. It would be dim a demand. But if you do it with that humility and that reverence, then it's powerful. And then it goes on, allow me, so that's again a, a humble thing, oh mighty God, the lasting privilege. You've got this balance here throughout this prayer of humility and a positive demand. Sometimes you can hear a prayer, some people will say, and they will mean it, and I'm not decrying them in any sense, but it's very... Um, tentative and is very dry and, and lacking in expression and therefore the energy that, that is invoked is, is, is lacking. See. So allow me, O mighty God, the lasting privilege of radiating to all the world thy great love. So you, then you've come to the point. You want to radiate to all the world thy great love. Not my great love, I'm a channel. Thy great love. So that, and this is you're now defining what you want to do, those who suffer may be given the power and energy to rise above their weaknesses. Now, weaknesses is an interesting word in that context, and I believe it refers to their karmic weaknesses. They may be, there may be a health weakness in that person, but obviously we all have uh, weaknesses of different kinds, and we all have karmic weaknesses, but we can rise above them. So it's a positive signal. So that's your start. Now, it comes back again, and I'm going quite quickly through this because of time. O oh, mighty God, again in great humility do I ask you, and again a demand, to send forth your power. It's a repetition here. O oh, mighty God, in great humility do I ask you to send forth your power, again, to give me this lasting privilege of being a channel, it's very repetitive here, so that my suffering brothers, and now you get it absolutely nailed down here by the Master Jesus who gave this prayer, so that my suffering brothers may be helped and guided and healed, and lifted into thy light. And then there's this very, very interesting statement at the end of that section. So that they who know not may look up. That could be taken, I believe, on several levels. You can certainly be saying those who, who, who are ignorant. As Brian said in the introduction, in, in, that's what enlightenment is, freedom from ignorance. They who know not may what? May look up. Look up. Yes, feel lifted up, but also look up to the higher chakras, the Christ center, the third eye, at least, where enlightenment dwells. So there's a mystical meaning as well in that statement. And I'm only scratching the surface here, just to, and there's a brilliant commentary on this, far better than anything I'm saying now in this book by Dr. King, which you can read at your leisure. Uh, and in doing so, receive through their higher selves your divine counsel. So they may look up, very mystical this, and in doing so, in looking up to the Christ center, receive through their higher selves, because that's how you contact the, the uh, higher consciousness, your, again, not my, but your divine counsel. You can even look higher than, than even the Christ center, the center even higher, but we're coming on to that later. <laughs> so that's the first section down to there. Now this, this shorter section is a, a perfect balance for it, I feel goes on like this, O oh, mighty God, this day have you granted me a divine privilege. So up to now you've been asking for the privilege to do this. Now you're saying, you've done this. This day have you granted me a divine, you have full confidence and complete faith. We were talking about that earlier. You kind of do something, uh, you do healing, and then you detach, you leave it. You have granted me a divine privilege. And you, you, you've said that, and then you move on. I ask you now, now this is karmic balance, you've served in the first part of that prayer, I ask you now to give to me the strength. You're now asking for something for yourself. You see, you see the change here. So that never again will I turn from my inner vision of you. I mean, I love that statement. The Master gave a very brilliant comment about that, actually. 
uh, he said, actually, and this, is, this shows how advanced, as I was saying earlier, he is and was. He said, actually, if you really did that, it, you, you couldn't actually move because you'd be in such a deep state of samadhi, you'd be physically immobile. And that's taking it to a high level um, and a brilliant level. But I, I believe that the Master Jesus must have given that for a reason. And it's a message of great hope because it's telling us that it's possible for us never again to turn from our inner vision. And if we never turn from our inner vision, we wouldn't make any mistake. Our judgments would be absolutely correct. We do the right thing, always. One could talk at length about that statement, you know, and never again will I turn from my inner vision of you. That's where it all goes wrong, actually, when we turn again from our inner vision. Even in our outer life, and that's enlightened living, an enlightened person would not turn from their inner vision. And then we have a, a wonderful mantra, and if you haven't heard this before, you now have Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Uh, I am great peace, great peace, great peace, if that was translated. It's always said once. And a beautiful ending, in praise of your greatness, O God, doth my soul sing. And this is, this is something I want to say, you know. Um, you know, people have appetites, people feel hungry, uh, people want money, people want different things in this world. But the soul wants this. The soul wants what we're doing right now. It's crying out for it. It's frustrated. You know, people talk about suppression. They talk about emotional suppression. They talk about sexual suppression. They don't talk about soul suppression much. I hardly ever hear it. And yet that's the biggest suppression on this planet, soul suppression. And it's extremely bad for us. And when we're doing this, our soul is free. It's going, oh, thank goodness. When you study the nine freedoms, if you decide to go into it, and I recommend that you do, your soul is relieved. Thank goodness you're, you're doing that, you know. And um, I'd like to make a, tell you something else too, about talking about service. When you study spiritual truth, and you may not have thought about this, you are serving as well. Yes, you're educating yourself, but every time you read a book like The Nine Freedoms, you are planting those thoughts on the mind belt of this earth. You are. So you are making a change. You're helping yourself, but you're also helping others by studying The Nine Freedoms. And the more you concentrate on it, and the more it means to you, and the more you feel it, the more you're planting those thoughts. Coming here this afternoon, you are serving others. You're not just learning. You're giving power to this teaching. So it's, it's a completely, perfectly balanced exercise. In praise of your greatness of God doth my soul sing, granted energy to sing on forever and forever. It's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? May it never be limited. May it, be, may it be, have free expression.